day, McVeigh, and happy Wednesday. How are you, boys and girls? How was yesterday, huh? So let's start with our birthdays today. Oh, look at that. Happy birthday to me. Ah, just kidding. April Fool's not my birthday. But it is Cynthia Gonzalez Ramirez's birthday in our third grade. Happy birthday, Cynthia. And Juliana Whitehurst in our second grade. Happy birthday. That's right, boys and girls. Today's April Fool's Day. So, great day for some jokes. So, let's get to it. All right. So, uh, I love this one. Uh, this is a, a cute little joke that came in from Miles Tobin. I'll make it user friendly. What do you call an alligator in a vest? Does anybody know? An investigator. Uh, get it? An investigator. Nice illustration. Good job, Miles. All right. Next up. Okay. This one comes from Gio Esposito. How do you make a tissue dance? <laughs> How do you make a tissue dance? And here's this clue. Oh, man. This is a perfect joke. You put a little boogie in it. Get it? <laughs> All right. Got some good ones right for Fool's Day. Uh, and this one's coming from Kaylee Ramarine, I believe. Yep. Okay. So uh, what do you call a group of fish getting smart? What do you call a group of fish getting smart? A school of fish. And this one's a play on words. We went through this uh, a few years back, boys and girls. It's um, the names of animals when they are in large groups. And each animal or fish or whatever has its own title. So a school of fish is different than, let's say, a pride of lions. And there's a reason why each animal group has a different title when they are in groups together. And the question is why? Why is it called something different? Wouldn't a large group of lions be called a school of lions? No, there's a reason why it's not. And there's a reason why fish are called a school of fish. Let's see if somebody can figure that out. And speaking of figuring some things out, uh, we had two new people, well, actually three, the Bonzalakis and uh, Sebastian Mustafich, who have figured out our mystery place. Yes, it was Haiti. So today on Name That Place, are you ready? This one's coming from Dylan Loftus. This is a state. I'm going to give you a clue right off the top. But when Mighty Mine visits this state, he wears a t-shirt and shorts because it's hot and warm. Hmm, which state could that be? Now, you should be thinking already, what part of the United States is this in? And also, thinking about things that have been figured out, we had three boys and girls get back to me on our riddle. I'm going to give you that riddle again. You ready? Someone's mother had four children. They were North, South, East. What's the name of the fourth? So, Alyssa DeCampi, Ryan Heckman, and Devin Lugo figured it out. Can you? And boys and girls, yesterday we were talking about Word work, word work, right? So what about word work? The word we had was omnivore, omnivore. What did that mean? So that means that the animal eats both plants and animals. Omni means all. Hmm. Can you think of another word that has omni in it? I can. Can you think of another word with omni, O-M-N-I, in it? 
Let's see if you can do it. Okay. And we had some jokes that needed illustrations, which I may not find, but that's okay. If I do, I'll get back to it. But I do have some updates on some inventions. So first up today is Madeline Teamsma. Take a look here. I love this. Look what Madeline did. She created a bird feeder out of her paper clip and the rubber band. So I don't know if you can see this, but she attached the rubber band to the cup with a paper clip. And then she hung another paper clip on the other side to attach it to the tree and created a bird feeder. How cool was that? Inventing something for somebody else. Way to go, Madeline. And then here's Timothy Lindell. He's been working from home, distance learning. He said, you know what? I need to stand this iPad up. Now, he could go to the store and buy one of those iPad stands, or he can make it himself, just like Dan did. Look at him. And look at the end result. His iPad stands up. Super job, Timmy. Keep up the good work. And speaking of creating boys and girls, our science fair is ready to start. So here's what you need to do. Look for the directions. They'll be posted on our website or ask your teacher. And we want to make something from the things you already have at home. I understand Reed Dillon in Ms. Sullivan's class is already working on hers. I can't wait to see more about that. And I was also thinking, if you remember, we looked at this and I said we would get back to this. So Lucas was working on making his own rainbow. And he made it. It took some time. And when Lucas did that, he figured out certain things. So this would be a great science project. Hmm. He noticed that the yellow and blue food coloring traveled through the paper more quickly. Why? That would be the question that a scientist might ask him or herself. And then try to figure that out. They might test that again. So the blue and uh, yellow food coloring travel through cloth more quickly? Do they travel through tissues more quickly? Or is it just that kind of paper that they used? Those are the kinds of things that we think about when we think scientifically. And then we test and we find out, is that true? Is it not true? What is it about the blue and the yellow dye? So let's see what you can come up with at home. Okay. Uh, oh, no, that is not the joke. Well, that's all right. We'll have uh, um, some more jokes to illustrate. Oh, here it is. Uh, you ready? This is very cute. So this one is coming from Dan Rodriguez, I believe. Yes. Okay. Why can't you say a joke while standing on ice? Why can't you tell a joke while standing on ice? Because it might crack up. Then you fall in, get it? Because the ice might crack up. All right, you got it. All right. Now, I'm wearing my super cool McVeigh merch today from our field day. This was the one got game because we've been thinking about games. And so today... We have a dice game, and this is an easy one, too. If you have dice in any game at home, you take two. Uh, these are 12-sided dice, but you don't even need the 12-sided dice because you can do it with just two regular or three regular dice. So I'm going to show you with just two regular dice. So the goal here is to roll the two. Now, I'm going to double. I got a one, and I got a three. So I'm going to double the one. That's two. Double the three. That's six. And then I'm going to multiply that. So that's 12. 2 times 6 is 12. Mm -hmm. And now it's a race. So somebody else is playing against me. We each roll the dice. Or I can start. 5 and 1. So what we're trying to do, the other player and I are looking at that 5 and 1. And we can throw in a, another dice if we want. Another die, I should have said. So here I have five, three, and six. Now, our number, if we remember in the beginning, was 12. 
I have to use 5, 3, and 6 to get as close to 12 as possible. I can use any operation I want. Hmm. So if I say 6 times 3, that's 18, and I subtract 5, that's 13. That's pretty close. Now, is there another way to get closer? Hmm. If I say 5 times 3 is 15 minus 6, that's 9. Nope, 13 is closer. Hmm. 5 plus 3 is 8 plus 6 is 14. 13 is still closer. Hmm. Is there any way for me to get 12? Because the only thing closer to, thir to uh, 12 than 13 is the number itself. Because even if I get 11... I'm still one away from 12. You see how I how it goes? So you keep going, and you use all the operations that you have to try to get as close to that first number as possible. And you can make this as simple, as complicated as you want. You could add more. So you'd have four dice, five dice. You can do it however you want. If you have 12-sided dice, you don't have to do what I did first. The first thing I did, because you want to get sort of a big number, is when I rolled the two dice, don't forget, I took the two numbers I got. The first one was a 6 and a 5. So I doubled the 6, that's 12. I doubled the 5, that's 10. 10 times 12 is 120. Wow, that's a big number. So now I can have lots of fun. I can take those three dice and roll them. So now what can I do? I can do 5 times 6 is 30 times 4. 120. Wow, right on this button. Woo, I just used straight up multiplication. But I could have done some addition, some subtraction, could have tried many different combinations. See if you can play the dice game at home. It's one of my favorites. Okay. And for our mighty kind moment of the day, I'm going back to something we did already. So here we go with our drum roll. Dun, dun, dun. So I talked about the starfish story, about making a difference for this one. So Rachel Andrioli in our kindergarten is making a difference. She's painting rocks. How do you like that? I love that. And what she's doing is painting rocks for people. She's not going near them, but she's leaving them for people. She's making a difference one person at a time. Now, can she paint a rock for everybody in the world? No. But she can paint some rocks for certain people, for some people. She can cheer up some people. And if we all just cheer up some people, the whole world can get cheerful. Right? You can make the difference for one person, two people, three people. Unbelievable. So what can you do? She figured out a way to make a difference. Because you can make a difference. And so in... Uh, the cards that I was going through, it says this. You are enough. You can make a difference. You. That's it. And Rachel is living proof. Good work, Rachel. And boys and girls, I know you can do it. How do I know? Because you're a mighty mind. And you're a mighty kind mighty mind. And boys and girls, every day. It's a good day to get smart and be kind to both each other and the earth. Let's have a wonderful April Fool's Day. See you tomorrow.